Today, we're going to look at the Lowell Blender XL and why its features, combined with its form factor, can be very useful for your video work. The Blender XL features two sets of LEDs, one set tungsten balanced and one set daylight balanced. These can both be independently controlled and turning both to maximum power will allow you to utilize the full output of the light. The light has a 45 degree beam angle when shot bare bowl and it also comes with a clear drop-in panel to protect the LEDs plus a diffusion panel to soften the light. You can power it from mains or something more portable like a V-mount battery. So you might be wondering where this light fits in with other LED panels. A larger, pricier 1x1 one -one unit will have more power, a wider spread of light and, due to its size, a softer output which can be modified to become even softer. A smaller, pocket-sized panel will have less power, but will generally also have an internal battery, making it very convenient for hiding in out-of-the-way places with no cables. And due to the lightweight form factor, easy to mount and boom safely. So what advantages does the Blender XL give us over the other two units? One of the features that makes the Blender XL stand out from the other lights is the previously mentioned 45 degree beam angle. Let's set up a simple studio lighting situation so we can see clearly why this beam angle is useful. We want to create a moody look with a dark background and some soft yet punchy light on our subject. And we're going to do that by firing our light through some diffusion material. So let's jump straight in with the Blender XL. We've essentially nailed the look we were after. We've kept the light from lighting our background too much, and we have a soft yet punchy look to the light on the face. Now we could leave it here and say, great, the Blender XL gave us what we wanted. Let's move on. But we want to know why it gave us the look we wanted. Because if we don't figure out why a light is suitable for a certain scenario, how would we ever know which light to choose in any situation? So let's try the same setup with a larger one by one panel. Because after all, when we want a good lighting setup quickly, we'd probably just go for the more expensive light, right? Shooting the one by one panel through our diffusion, we have a softer, more wrapping light on our subject. As the panel is larger, we're spreading more light and filling more of the diffusion, making for a larger light source. This gives us an overall softer light wrapping into the shadows and also lighting up more of the background. And although this is nice, it's not what we wanted. We wanted to keep our background darker and our light punchier. So a larger, more expensive light isn't the right tool for the job. What about our pocket-sized LED? We definitely have the size advantage here, taking up much less space than our larger 1x1. One one. But this is definitely underexposed. Keeping our camera settings the same as before, we can see just how much output we lose when we shoot with a smaller light like this, especially when shooting through diffusion. 
So jumping back to the Blender XL, we can see how it was perfect for the shot we had in mind. The 45 degree beam angle helped us to keep a smaller, more direct beam of light into our diffusion, giving us a good amount of light output, like our 1x1. But unlike our 1x1, we have much more control over the light with the Blender XL's narrower beam, making for a soft but punchy light source, without too much wrap spreading into our shadows or onto our backdrop. Our general footprint stays small due to the size of the unit, similar to the Pocket LED. But unlike the Pocket LED, we have more than enough light output to work with. So how does this translate into a full setup? Before we take a look, a quick reminder that you can use my code Rob Ellis over on Zyro when you build your website or storefront, giving you more discount, extra months free of charge, and a custom domain for a year. If you need a professional way to showcase your work, or even sell digital products, Zyro gives you all the tools to do so with full customization an easy to use drag and drop system and speedy loading times. Use my code Rob Ellis or click on the link in the video description to get up to 71% off your website or storefront with free extra months free with one year, two year or four year plans along with a custom domain for a year. Let's remove the background and place our subject in a room, with the blender still lighting him through diffusion. As we saw earlier, the close distance between our subject and light source, combined with the blender's 45 degree beam angle, helped us to keep our light from spilling all over the background. It is having a small effect, but we can see our subject is much more exposed than the background is. And what does the light on the face look like? To me, with the angle of the light, with the way we have the colour balanced, and with the soft yet punchy illumination of the blender through diffusion, it kind of looks like sunset, almost like there's a window off camera, with the evening sun streaming in softly. Now because we don't have lots of light spill onto the background, we have the freedom to shape the light on the back wall any way we want without needing to implement any extra tools to take down exposure on the back wall or deepen the shadows on our subject like we would have needed to do with a larger one by one panel. So let's do something with this background to match up with our sunset key light. The blinds patterns on the back wall, set to a similar colour temperature as our Blender XL, ties our key light into the shot and allows it to make sense in the context of the scene. Now it really feels like our subject is stood in a room with the sunset coming through a window, camera left, perhaps with one clear window closer to our subject and one further back with the blinds down. You may have noticed that we're catching a reflection of our diffusion in this back picture frame. This isn't too much of an issue, since we can see the light hitting the back wall anyway, so it makes sense in the context of the scene. However, if we want to tweak that for a cleaner look, we can throw some black material up, just out of frame, to block the light from hitting the glass on the picture. So you can see how the differentiating features of the Blender XL, in comparison to a smaller and bigger LED panel, allowed us to take advantage of the Blender for this little scene, making the 45 degree beam angle a perfect fit for this scenario. 
The tighter beam angle of the Blender XL can also help us with things like bounce. In this setup, we use the Blender XL as a bounce light, firing into some white cotton material, camera right. Due to the 45 degree beam angle, we were able to angle the light in such a way to hit our bounce without spilling onto our subject. And although we had a little spill around the bounce material, the majority of the output is focused directly onto the bounce, rather than being wasted elsewhere. As we saw earlier, if we had used a larger or a smaller LED unit, we would have had issues with output and spill. So the Blender XL slots into the situation perfectly, giving us the balance between beam angle and output. On top of this, the unit itself is compact, making it an easy solution for this tighter space, keeping the unit out of frame. We shot this in the evening as the temperature of the light outside was getting cooler. So in this scenario, we decided to go for something slightly warmer in temperature as our key, to add a little contrast against the back window. But we could have easily adjusted the colour temperature of our light to match better with our window. Or even gone for the polar opposite. Or maybe something halfway. The dials make for an easy way to mix the two temperatures together, so that you're able to select the appropriate colour temperature for the scene. Very handy if you're working quickly and need to match colour temperature by eye. We utilise the Blender XL and the Fusion panel in this clip to recreate the feeling of morning sun coming through the window. Although the diffusion panel does soften the light from the unit, you're still working with a relatively small light source, which makes it perfect for small spaces like this, when you need to replicate a harder light source like the sun, but you want to take a bit of the edge off. The Blender XL was simply propped up in the window, diffusion panel inserted, shining out onto the landing where our subject is sat. As our landing area's doors and walls are white, the light was bounced around, filling in our shadows and making for a believable morning scene, with our blender representing the morning sun and the bounce from all directions replicating what would naturally be happening to the light as the sun shines through. With a less powerful light, it could have been more difficult to achieve this amount of bounced fill. With a more powerful light, we would have struggled to fit it into the windowsill. So the Blender XL was the perfect tool for the job. Overall, I think the Blender XL is a great little light, giving you a good amount of versatility between hard and soft light, with a nice balance between precision and output. It gives you some advantages that you can't find in either a smaller or larger panel, fitting nicely between them, and is a great addition to your lighting toolkit. Patrons get an ad-free extended version of this video, along with a bunch of exclusive breakdowns and extra content. I used music from AudioSocket in this video. Click my referral link in the video description and use the code Rob Ellis when you sign up for a free month of the best and most diverse range of stock music available. I use ArtGrid for stock footage. Get an extra two months free when you sign up using the link in the video description. And don't forget, you can use my code Rob Ellis over at Zyro to get up to 71% off your website or storefront with free extra months free. 
with one year, two year, or four year plans, along with a custom domain for a year.